There's a new Skinwalker fusion, so you better believe we got content on this guy. What's up guys, MTG Jedi here. How you doing today? I am very excited that we have a new Skinwalker in the game. Uh, Nishak? Is that how we say it? Is that how we're saying it? Nishak Vermin Lord? Anyway, dude is freaking cool. Dude is freaking cool. You want a Rat King? This guy should be a dungeon boss. He looks amazing. Absolutely amazing. So, anyway, if you don't know his kit... He has a triple hitter on his A1, and each hit has a 40% chance of placing bombs. This, wait, bomb debuffs placed by the skill on enemies whose max HP is higher than 200,000 will deal double damage. So basically, bosses. And then A2, decrease attack. Um, also has a chance of decreasing the detonation countdown of all bomb debuffs and increasing the duration of all poison debuffs. And then over here, AOE bombs. And then again, the bombs will deal double damage. And then on his passive, every time a bomb is placed, wait, every time a bomb debuff placed by this champion detonates or is removed, we're going to replace it with two protected poison debuffs and an attack in all battles aura. Decent stats to go off of. This guy seems great. Okay, so let's start out with the masteries for this champion because I think that he will really benefit from Giant Slayer, okay? Um, I think that if you can hit the accuracy, the counterattack masteries are going to be awesome. But if not, then you would just want your your normal accuracy stuff over here, your uh, chance to place, and then your e extension of the buffs. That would be good as well. Um, <clears throat> for me, I went to the counter attack and then sort of normal boss, clan boss, mastery type things. And then the build that I have for him is in Relentless and Cruel. And I focused on as high of an attack stat as I could get. Um, some of you will be able to do this level of attack and like 240 crit damage. But I figured most of you will probably either be able to do high attack or high crit damage. So that's what I went with here and kept him in Relentless. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to test his damage. And then the second thing we're going to do is we're going to put him into Clan Boss. Then we'll see how much time we have left for this showcase. So, um, everybody always loves to see this tested in Dragon 20, so we'll come over here. He is a positive affinity here. That is great. So we have an attack aura. We uh, can go back to the full size, huh? We have an attack aura. We have Arbiter for the increased attack, Bad Elf for the increased damage from poisons, Lydia for the decreased defense, and Weaken. For me, that's a pretty standard setup to test damage. Now, coming in here, I think that he's great for this. I really do. I think that he's great. So if we come in here, we go increase attack. We go poisons. And we go decrease defense and weaken. So what you're going to notice here is that with either of his abilities, and you want to start with this one first because it places the bombs, and then this one lowers the cooldowns. Like, it will it will detonate them. So, if we are able to get an extra turn, this is going to deal, like, half of their health. So, like, 100k. We got the extra turn proc, and then that's going to kill them. And basically, his animation is throwing rat bombs, and that is so cool. That is so cool. So, what I really want to know is, like, that seems like a pretty quick clear, right? So, anyway, let me get to the boss so we can actually see the damage. Alright, so we're to the boss. Um, let's see what kind of damage he can do on the boss, okay? Now, I think one of his school skills is going to be off cooldown, but he's going to pair really well with Lydia because she has that poison sensitivity. So... 
I guess we'll just A1 and try to play some bombs here. We didn't get it. We did get an extra turn though. Okay, we're not we're not landing those, but that's okay. The dragon's not like immune to bombs or something, is he? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. So here we go. Very mediocre initial damage. I mean, but that was pretty good damage on the boss, though. That was like, well, for 20, it was not. Because you can get, like, an enemy max HP hit in here. And it would just do a crap ton. But I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go rerun this. I'm gonna put, like, Kaimar in here. And to reset the skill cooldowns. And I'm gonna see how fast we can actually clear this with this team because i actually think that this i mean i don't know you tell me is this a, is this a legit team for level 20 or is this unreasonable like if you have these champions you're going to be using a different team probably look at all the extra turns just for you guys in the video i mean it does seem like he can chunk through the boss pretty well i mean he's really the only damage dealer other than Bad L putting some poisons here. That's all right. I'm very interested. Let's go. Let's go look at a run here with Kaimar. Um, I'm gonna need to actually set up the AI. One sec. Ready, set, go. Here it is. All right. So full auto. Let's watch and see. So we already know that he's gonna do a good job clearing the waves. And he's going to obviously get an extra turn there again for the video. What a baller. Thank you, my dude. Okay, sure. We get, a, <laughs> we get a nice proc there. I don't know why we have that blessing on anyone in this team. That doesn't really make sense. Again with the extra turn. I mean, if, we, if that's reliable, obviously it's not. It's just a chance. But sheesh. That's sick for the video. Double extra turns. So this is about as fast as it could possibly ever be. Like, can we can we do this on level like level twenty five? We would have to put somebody else in the team for twenty five, right? Like this is not this can't clear the waves on twenty five. I might have to double check that. I mean, like. If you were able to fit someone else, like, I don't know if, like, you could fit a Royal Guard in here instead of the Bad L. But, like, that doesn't happen. When you're, like, when, as a content creator, when we're testing teams like this, I never say, and then this could be a legitimate team. But he's doing such an efficient job on the waves and the boss, this could be a legitimate team. I'm I'm pretty impressed so far, guys. I'm pretty impressed so far. He is fully booked. So if you're going to use him, you definitely would want to book him. I mean, that's true of most legendaries. I mean, under two minutes there with the, like, powerful test team. Wowzers. Well, let's try something else. I mean, so I put Royal Guard in for Bad L, and, like, that's, like, under a minute 30. On Dragon 25? I think this guy's legit. I think this guy's legit. Wowzers. Alright, let's work on a Dragon 25 team. As I was uh, perusing this Dragon 25 team that didn't really work out, I seem to have missed some critical words. Then grants an extra turn! <laughs> Guys. He's always going to get an extra turn by putting him in Relentless. Did you guys know that? Did you guys know he gets an extra turn here? That's ridiculous. He has an AoE two bombs that gets an extra turn that then l decreases the detonation countdown. What? Okay. Well, the so here's the Dragon 25 team. 
Uh, Zavia's missing. That, that makes sense. Actually, no, because she was still fast. Okay, I'm very confused, but, um, the Dragon 25 team that I was looking at was a Poison Explosion team. I just don't think that it's necessary. So, we would, we would, like, I don't know what team he would be best in, and I don't know if he's the best option, but all I'm saying is he does a crap ton of damage to the boss. It, like, he reminds me of another version of Theodore. So, like, if you don't have Teo, he might be able to do it. The problem is, he's an attack-based champion, so he can't solo it. So, you would need somebody to, like, protect him, revive him, shield him, something. Okay? So, this team did not work, but I'm just gonna be honest with you. You know, I'm not gonna, like, I'm not gonna content create or hide it from you. But what I do need to do is I need to test this in clan boss. So I'm going to get that set up and we're going to take a look at the run, okay? All right. So, now that that's all set up cuz we're on the test server. Hey, shout out to Plarium. Thanks for letting us on the test server. Okay? They've done a lot of things to make it easier for us to use, which is amazing. We're just going to take Draco out of my team here and we're going to set the AI to make sure that it does one and then two, and then we can just come in here and hit go. And now there's no decreased defense or weaken, and so I'm just not sure how much damage he can do. But if you have a team with, you know, another champion placing decreased defense and weaken, and not just one champion, I think that he can be really amazing. Um, especially for clan boss, but I don't know 100%. So we're just testing him here. So, I'm very interested to see what the damage is going to be here. We have a bunch of bombs. We have a bunch of poisons. But is that really going to be enough to compete with somebody like a Draco? Um, I know that, you know, even Bellinor, who doesn't do anything except place the decrease defense and weaken who got a shadow nerf with this buff that they gave him because they decreased his multipliers. Um, Bellinor is great just because he places the decreased defense and weaken. Even someone like Fane places decreased defense and weaken and does the poisons. So I don't know if he's going to be good enough for a team like this. But you can see, he keeps the debuff bar completely full. He keeps the debuff bar completely full. So we're going to have poisons up for the entire fight. That does mean that he's not going to be able to place any bombs on the boss. So I don't know how to feel about that. But if you had someone in the team who was like eating those... Like, if you maybe ran him with, like, a Dark Kale or so, um, I think that could be pretty good. We do have that Decrease Attack buff that could be uh, replaced with a Poison. So, we're right now, we're at nine Poisons. But we are at over a million damage per turn, which definitely means that this is going to two-key. So, he is definitely an option. He's definitely an option. Um, one of the things that would need some testing is, you know, is it going to be more damage to build him with crit rate and crit damage? Or is it going to be more damage to focus on the attack stat? You know, I currently have an attack amulet on there. I have attack percentage gloves, you know. So that is one of the questions in my mind which I don't have the answer to right now, but you can see that this is scaling up, so it's possible that this is going to one key. I'm going to let this go. We'll fast forward to the end and take a look at the damage breakdown for you. All right, so we're nearing the end of this run. It was not a quick run. This is almost 20 minutes here, but we are almost up to the one key with him. So, I'm wondering if we just built him slightly different, if we would be able to get the one key. Like, 
that's really close. Also, we were able to remove the uh, decreased attack war off and fill that with a poison. So this poison bar has been full the entire fight, which is actually incredible. Like your Vizier teams, that's their whole goal is to literally fill the bar with poisons and then keep it there the whole fight. So he has like a built-in Vizier effect to extend the debuffs. And obviously he has all of those extra turns. So he can be procking his um he can be procking his uh masteries um multiple times per turn because he has not war master he has giant slayer so on every hit and this is this is darn close okay and so if you're an end game player and you're looking for somebody new for your clan boss team like this could be the dude Especially, again, if you have more spots available than just this one damage dealer spot for Bat Eater. Like, for example, there are a lot of other unkillable teams where you get to have two damage dealers. You could put somebody like, um, I don't know if there's anybody who does decrease defense, weaken, and poison sensitivity, but that would be the ideal three to go with all of these poisons so 67 million and he did 36 on his own obviously taking the majority of the damage here i've gotta say i think his potential is enormous there's so much to say that's good about his kit and nothing to say that's bad about it in my opinion I think this guy is absolutely amazing. I think this is a must-do fusion for almost every player in the game. And I think this is one that we're going to regret skipping if we skip it. So, do this fusion. Hopefully it's not hard. Um, I think there's no epics worth skipping this for. Uh, so, if we look over here, the epics for the fusion are... Uh, Andalia, Aishma, Trumbor, and Morag. And, like, these first two are pretty meaningless, okay? A1 provoke, low percent, AoE decrease attack, whatever. Counter attacks, one under decrease attack. Okay, who cares? Uh, Aishma, Knight's Rev, uh, A1 poison, AoE weaken, which is nice, but, like, okay, fine. And then this one, um, decrease the duration of all enemy buffs, increase the duration of all enemy buffs, uh, enemy debuffs, whatever. Buffs, debuffs, yes. But it's a single target, so you're talking about like bosses probably, and then she has this heal. Now, Trumbor actually does seem decent, and I love the way he looks. Also, I need more orcs on my account. I feel like he's a great addition to the game. A1 weaken leech. AoE, remove a random debuff from all allies before attacking. And then the damage increases by 5% for each debuff removed. So this could be good against like the nether spider or someone who's placing debuffs on you. Even the griffins throwing your debuffs back at you. Uh, he also has ally protection, increased defense, which is very nice. And then... He can decrease the duration of all debuffs on himself whenever he's attacked, which is a very interesting passive. So I like this guy, but I don't think he's worth skipping the fusion for. I also like this chick, but I don't think she's worth skipping the fusion for. She has the double hitter ignoring shield on the A1. She has an AoE strengthen with an attack. And that, I think that's unprecedented, and if it's not, it's extremely rare. I can't think of anybody who does an attack and a strengthen. So for an epic and defense-based, like, that's pretty incredible ability right there. Then she has a, a, a mini ally attack as well. So she also has counterattacks when hit uh, under a strength and buff placed by this champion. So if she puts strength on herself, then she counterattacks. So I think that she's great, 
But again, I don't think that any of these epics are worth skipping the fusion for. Okay, there's a crap ton more champions on the in on the test server that are going to be added to the game. I'm pretty sure I'm allowed to show those to you. If not, okay, my bad. But I'm not giving you any information on them because I don't know when we're allowed to release that information. At least when I'm recording this. But you can get that from somebody else or from me another day. But I want to know. Give me your opinion on this fusion in the comments below. And number two. Should I have put more crit damage on him? Should I have lowered the attack stat, put more crit damage? You tell me, because his base attack is not that high. So let me know your thoughts on this fusion in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hit that like button if you made it all this way into the video, and I'll see you guys later.